from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Who that? George Reed. Well, Merry Christmas, George. Is it? Oh, what's the matter? You ever hear of Jediah Gillis? Uh, eccentric? Owns about half of Rhode Island? That's the boy. A couple of weeks ago, he wrote a special policy on an item he wanted insured. And it's up and disappeared, huh? How'd you know? Oh, just a wild guess. What did he lose? I hope you're sitting down, Johnny. Yeah? Why? Because the insured item is a mouse. House? Mouse. What? Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England, American Branch Office, 443 North 15th Street, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the missing mouse matter. Expense account item one, 85 cents. Taxi from my apartment to George Reed's office. He was on his feet waiting for me. His Ivy League suit looked as though it had been slept in and he needed to shave. Close the door, Johnny. Yeah, sure. Johnny, I'm going to level with you. This thing has me going. Well, it serves you right. Anybody who'd insure a mouse deserves what he gets. Yeah, but it isn't an ordinary mouse, Johnny. No. Not according to Mr. Gillis's original application. Yeah, take a look. Uh, item to be insured. One unusually talented grayish-brown mouse. Unusually talented? Like how? I don't know. What? I tried to find out, but Gillis wouldn't tell me. And still you issued the policy. Well, you know our company, Johnny. We have a reputation for insuring almost anything, but we have to draw the line occasionally, and we would have here, except for one thing. What's that? And believe me, it better be good. It is. Gillis carries all of his insurance with us. Yeah, but even so. Just one of his several policies is a straight life for 350000 Wow, Wow, hey. king-size premiums, huh? Exactly. So when he called asking us to insure this fellow's mouse for a few weeks... Wait a minute. Gillis doesn't own it? No. Well, who does? It belongs to a friend of his, a man named Glazer. He's spending the holidays with Gillis. Gillis didn't want to be responsible if something happened to Glazer's mouse while he's there, so he asked us to write the policy. How much did you insure it for? All the company would allow, 5000 Oh, now, George, you think I want to get all worked up over a lousy five grand loss? What kind of a commission can I possibly make on Look, that? give me a chance to finish, will you? All right, but only because it's Christmas. All right. Late last night, I received a call from Gillis. He wanted to know whom we considered the best investigator in this part of the country. When I told him, he told me about the mouse and insisted I send you up to help look for it. No, no, George, I'm sorry, but I'm going to pass. I've handled some screwy cases in my time, but this is... Please, wait till I finish, will you? I told Gillis you wouldn't be interested. That's when he started putting on the squeeze. Squeeze? How do you mean? He said if I didn't get you, he'd cancel his policies. Oh, come on. You don't believe that, do you? I don't know what to believe. Gillis is a screwball of the first water. We've known that for a long time, and frankly, I'd rather not take a chance. Well, you've got to. Maybe not. Hmm? I've received an okay from upstairs. On this one, you can write your own ticket. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? You didn't give me a chance. Look, there's a train for Providence at 3.30. Here's Gillis's address. He wants you to stay with him. That'll cost more, Georgie. It figures. Merry Christmas, Johnny. Same to you, Santa Claus. <laughs> Expense account item 285 cents, cab fare, back to my apartment. I was intrigued by what George had told me and by what his company was going to add to my bank account, so I didn't really mind changing my plans for the holidays. Expense account item three, eighteen dollars and ninety cents. Transportation, including a round trip ticket, Hartford to Providence, and cab fare out to the Gillis residence. Palace would be a better word for it. It stood in the middle of a large wooded park. It must have been half a dozen acres, all of it surrounded by an old fashioned iron fence. I dismissed the cab and had started toward the front door when it opened. And standing against the light, watching me, was a tall, beautiful girl. Careful the steps. Why? Oh, oh, thanks. We've been expecting you, Mr. Dollar. Hi. Well, hi. Mr. Glazer and Father are in the library. 
Would you like to meet them now or wait till after you're settled? I'm I'm afraid I'd better see them right away, Miss Gillis. Marion, Johnny. Well, come along. You know, for the first time, I'm glad I came home for the holidays. Home from where? New York. Here we are. You'll have to come visit me, Johnny. Maybe I'll do something drastic, like losing a mouse to guarantee it. Marion, I told you to keep that door closed. Oh, Mr. Doll is here, Father. Oh, oh, well, have him come in. <laughs> yes, by all means, have him come in. <laughs> See you later, Johnny. Yeah. Well, Dollar, glad you finally got here. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, this is my friend and associate, Bert Glazer. Hiya, Mr. Glazer. Uh, Bertie and his pals, Mr. Dollar. Beg your pardon? Uh, my dog act. Uh, you investigators are supposed to have good memories. I hoped you might have caught us at some time or other. No, I'm afraid not. Uh, would you like to have a drink, Mr. Dollar? Uh, no, thanks. Now, suppose I you got get... anything you want to drink. I got an eggnog, hot buttered rum. Well, uh, maybe later. Right now, I'd like to hear the details of your loss. You mean that insurance agent didn't give you all the information? He didn't know it all, Mr. Gillis. All he did know was that a so-called talented mouse so has disappeared. So-called. And he hasn't disappeared either. Not at all. He's been kidnapped, that's what. Kidnapped, yes, sir, and we know who did it, too. And why? We know why, too. And it's your job to get him back, Dollar. Oh, now, wait a minute. And I... I'm not going to pay one red cent for ransom. Not one cent. Not one cent. Okay, okay. But what makes you so sure the mouse was kidnapped? Well, I... I'm afraid I can't tell you that without Bert's permission. Well, Mr. Glazer? Well, if we tell you, we must have your solemn promise you won't repeat it to anybody. Uh, until Christmas Day. Well, I, I'm i not sure I can do that. If you can't, we don't open our mouths. Right. Well? Okay. Till Christmas Day. Good, good. Uh, Dollar, suppose I told you Gulliver was worth at least $50,000. Gulliver? The missing mouse. Oh. You'd be surprised if I said he was worth that much? Depends. You claim he's talented. Does that have something to do with this uh, valuation you put on him? Something. something. Oh, it has everything to do with it. Yes, sir. Well, what does Gulliver do that other mice can't? Nothing. But it's how he does it that counts. How he does what? Sings. What? Can't you hear the man, Miss Della? Can't you hear him? Gulliver sings. He carries a tune. You know. With the clarity of a clarion, the fervor of a female opera star, and the tone of a tenor. If that's how we plan to bill him. I, um, <clears throat> I see, uh, well, uh... But he doesn't believe us. Ah. Oh, no, wait, I, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> There's no need to. We can tell by your face. Can't we, Bert? But a mouse. Mr. Dollar, it is a scientific fact that mice sing. Mice sing? Well-known magazines have published articles proving it. Unfortunately, most of them sing in a scale too high for human hearing. Ah, uh, but not Gulliver. Well, not Gulliver. Yeah, that's right. He's a basso. A basso. Uh, by mousy standards, that is. Oh, no. <laughs> no, Bert, he still doesn't believe us. Very well, Jediah, there is only one thing to do. There's only one thing to do. You follow us, Dollar. We'll erase the doubt in your mind forever. I took a good look at Bert Glazer, then reluctantly followed the two of them out of the library and down a long hall. At the moment, this thing had all the earmarks of a good old-fashioned con game. Or better still, a benefit on behalf of Bert Glazer with Jodiah Gillis and Floyds of England as the sole cash contributors. We wandered for what seemed like blocks through the old mansion and finally reached a large playroom. On top of one of the billiard tables was a small brass cage. In it were two small grayish-brown mice. Glazer opened the cage and let them out. Mr. Dollar, allow me to present Hecuba and Esmeralda. Oh, how do you do? I mean, uh, I suppose they sing too. Oh, they certainly do. But not nearly as well as Gulliver. Just don't have the instrument, you know. Instrument? The voice, the voice, Dollar, the voice, the vocal cords. Oh, oh, yeah, I I see. But uh, now, where did you keep Gulliver? Uh, In here with the others. Bert didn't want to separate them. Uh, That's right. I originally started to make the three of them into a singing, uh, you know, trio like the Andrews sisters. But Gulliver advanced so rapidly, I decided he should be a soloist. Oh, sure. You aren't afraid of mice, Mr. Danner? No. No, well, that's fine. They sense it if you are, you know. It upsets them. It upsets them. If, all right, now, Hecuba, move over a bit. Give Esmeralda some room. That's it. Now, up on your haunches. 
Up, 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 up. There we are. <laughs> now, what would you like to hear, Mr. Dollar? Oh, anything at all. <laughs> oh, Bert, how about my favorite? Uh, over the way. Good, good, good. Hey, you got it, Esmeralda? Over the waves. That's it. Heck, you up. All ready then? Hmm. Good. That'll be fine. Ready now? One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, that's it. Oh, beautiful, Esmeralda. Beautiful. Yeah. Well. I won't say I was convinced, but I won't say I wasn't. But I will say those mice were singing something, or giving a mighty good imitation of it. We returned to the library, and this time I sampled the eggnog liberally. <laughs> Is that all right, Dollar? Oh. oh, fine, thanks. Well, Dollar, you know now why we believe Gulliver was kidnapped? Well, I'm not sure. To exploit him, what else? Exactly. You have any idea who did it? Harry McQueen, that's who. McQueen. Who's McQueen? Used to be my agent. Theatrical agent? Uh Uh-huh. He's been snooping around here lately, Johnny. We figure he's gotten wind of our mice. What do you mean by snooping around, Mr. Gillis? Oh, you know, he's been out here twice this week wanting to see me. Had to kick him out of here yesterday morning. How'd he get in? Well, my daughter answered the door. Uh, Yes, I... She didn't know McQueen from Adam. So when he asked for me, she figured he belonged in here, rehearsing the show with the rest of us. Rehearsing what show, Mr. Gillis? What show? The show for the children's hospital. <laughs> Jodiah puts one on for the sick kids every Christmas Eve. Of course. You know, Dollar, Variety Act, the Santa Claus. Uh, this year, though, we got a radio hookup. Uh, go all over the state. And Gulliver, well, he was going to headline. And that's why I sent for you, Dollar. I figured you can get him back by tomorrow afternoon if anybody can. How long was McQueen in here before you noticed him? Long enough to lift Gulliver. This was our dress rehearsal, darling. We'd asked some of the kids from around the neighborhood in to watch, so it was pretty crowded. Where were the mice during the rehearsal? Well, that's where I made my mistake. What do you mean? We were keeping them a secret till the real show. Well, where were they? In their cage, over there on the mantel. Now, we were using this part of the room for the stage, so McQueen could have just reached in and taken Gulliver without us seeing him. Now, what makes you so sure McQueen did it? We told you. Besides, who else would want him? Uh, who else? And it was right after I kicked him out of here that I discovered Gulliver was missing. What'd you do then? Why, well, I called off the rehearsal and started searching for him. McQueen? Big Gulliver. And I put in a telephone call to the Providence House where McQueen was staying. Did you talk to him? Nope. They said he checked out. After questioning them for a while, I finally had a nightcap with Jodiah, then went to the phone in the hall and made some calls including one to George Reed. Well, how's it going, Johnny? It's not. That's why I'm calling. Look, they think a theatrical agent named Harry McQueen stole the mouse. He has offices in Boston and New York. I placed a person-to-person call to both offices, but with tomorrow Christmas Eve, he might not get the message. So what do you want me to do? Find out his home number. Ask him to call me here. Okay. Anything else? Hello? Johnny? Johnny, you there? Yeah. And so is a cat. A big, yellow cat. What's so unusual about that? Oh, nothing. Except he's got a grayish-brown mouse between his two front paws. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. You can't buy happiness by the pound or the yard, but you can have it by the hour with no strings attached every Monday through Friday evening and each Saturday in the daytime when the Robert Q. Lewis Show is on the air. Join him and his fun-loving gang five nights a week and Saturdays in the daytime on most of these same stations. Now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Missing Mouse Matter. I was standing in the hall of Jodiah Gillis' home looking at a big yellow cat that had a mouse between its two front paws. As far as I was concerned, a mouse is a mouse, and this one could be Gulliver. I cut short my phone conversation with George Reed, then started toward the cat. Here, kitty. Here, kitty, kitty. Nice, kitty. Pretty kitty. Here, kitty. Mama, where are you? Here, kitty, kitty. That's a good kitty. Ah, kitty, let me have the little mouse. Mama, you naughty cat. Where... Oh... This cannibal belong to you, Marion? Yes, I promised Father I'd... What do you mean, cannibal? Take a look. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And he's very, very dead. Oh. You don't think it's Gulliver, do you? Well, Mr. Glazer will have to identify him. And if he is, 
Well, that's that. Oh, no, no, Johnny. What do you mean? Oh, Johnny, please, you don't have to tell him, do you? Well, sure. If it's Gulliver, this thing's cleared up. If it's not, your Rama gets a reward for being a good mouser. Oh, Johnny, please. Dad almost had a fit when I arrived here with Rama. He made me promise to keep him in my room. This the only time he's been out? Well, no. Oh. He was out for a little while yesterday while they were rehearsing. I didn't notice he was gone till after lunch. Then the corpse could be Gulliver's. Oh, Johnny, if it is, there's nothing we can do about it now. And if you tell my father besides making him angry, it'll break his heart. All right. I won't say anything until tomorrow night. Oh, thanks, Johnny. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Christmas Eve morning came cold, crisp, and clear. The Gillis grounds were covered with new-fallen snow, and the trees were heavy with icicles, giving the whole place the look of a winter wonderland. I dressed and went down to join Gillis and Bert Glazer at breakfast. I was on my third strawberry when the phone started to ring. Yeah. You expecting a call, Dollar? Mm. Yeah, matter of fact, I am. Yeah. Then you'd better answer it. If it's somebody at the broadcast station for me, tell them I'll be at the children's hospital at noon. They can call me there. Right. Hello? Johnny Dollar? Speaking. Look, I don't know what's going on down there or why you're going to pester me about it. Who is this? Harry McQueen. Who did you think? Well, I wasn't sure. Well, your friend Reed got me out of bed this morning, Dollar. He told me you wanted to ask me some questions about a mouse that's missing from Jediah Gillis's place. Hey, that's right. What do you know about it? Well, I've done a lot of pilfering in my time. I've taken towels from hotels from Maine to Miami and Seattle to Bridgeport. But I never had to stoop so low as to steal a mouse from any hotel, garbage dump, trap, or field. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Except for one thing. Yeah? This particular mouse was a performer. It was a what? He was trained, did tricks. Still doesn't interest me. Well, then why were you trying to see Mr. Gillis? To get some of my people on his Christmas show. Anything wrong with that? No. There'll be a lot of publicity about it. Would have done him a lot of good. And you're sure you weren't interested in the mouse? Look, Dollar, when I went into this business 18 years ago, I swore then I'd never handle kids, belly dances, or animal acts. But you handled Bert Glazer's dog act. His what? Dog act. Bertie and his pals. Oh, somebody's feeding you a line, Dollar. That act was Bill Bertie and his pal. And the pal is a dummy. Glazer's a top-notch ventriloquist. He's a master. You hear me, Dollar? Yeah, Harry. I hear you fine. I had to do some thinking, so I put on my coat and went outside for a walk around that wooded park. What I had just learned about Glazer confirmed what my instinct, my common sense, had been telling me all along. Except for one thing. The performance given by Hecuba and Esmeralda the night before. If Glazer had been doing the singing for those two mice, he was a master ventriloquist, which was exactly what Harry McQueen said he was. I'd started back toward the house, wondering if I should get Jediah aside now and tell him or wait until after the show when something soft and cold hit me on the back of the head. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, Johnny, I couldn't oh. resist such a serious target. Anything new? Uh, well, if you mean have I found Gulliver, the singing mouse, no. Dad told me to tell you, if Gulliver does turn up before 1.15, rush him over to the hospital. Yeah, sure. But I think that's extremely unlikely. You think Rama got him, don't you? If he did, he got a very ordinary mouse. He didn't get one that sings. I'm afraid I lost you. Doesn't matter. Oh, now, I wonder what he wants. Hmm. That boy on the porch. Oh, well, if this was Hartford, I'd say he was the paper boy coming around to collect. Well, it's not Hartford, and he's not a paper boy because Dad doesn't subscribe to anything but fortune. Oh, well, then he's selling something. Well, if he is, he's not going to give us a chance to buy any. Johnny, looks looks like we scared him off. Hmm, that's funny. Hey! Hey, come back! He sure tore out of here when he saw us. I wonder what he wanted. Do you suppose he was one of the kids they invited in to see the dress rehearsal? Well, if he was, what would he be doing back here today? I don't know. Let's take a look around. We found it in the playroom, near where Gulliver's cage had been. It was a roundish metal clamp, the kind of boy wraps around his trouser leg when he's riding a bike. I was about to call the hospital and ask Judiah for a list of all the kids they'd invited to the rehearsal when the front doorbell rang. Johnny, it's that boy again. Better let me get in. Hello? 
Hi. Hi. Uh, I was over here to see the show the other day. Oh? Yeah. You see it? No, I uh, I wasn't here then. Oh. Jeez. Sure is calling. Yeah, sure is. Oh, why don't you come in and get warm? Oh, no, that's okay. No, come on, come on. Nobody's here. No? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure, come on. I don't want to bother nobody, you know. I was just riding by and I thought I'd stop and tell old man Gillis what a swell show they put on. You really liked it, huh? Yeah. All except for that Santa Claus. Oh? What was wrong with him? Nothing. Just that, well, who believes in all that smushy kid stuff? Hmm? Kids, I guess. How old are you, uh... Bobby. Uh, Bobby Knees. How old are you, Bobby? Almost 11. Well, being that old, I can understand why you weren't impressed with the Santa Claus. All that other stuff, too. You know, like giving presents and singing those hymns and junk like that. You gotta cut it out when you, when you start growing up. You sure do, boy. Yeah. You know... You and my mom, you, you get along just fine. Oh? Yeah. She feels about Christmas. She feels about Christmas just like you and me do. All right. Yeah. Boy, this, this log fire sure makes your eyes smart, don't it? Yeah, sure does. Where do you live, Bobby? Uh, across town, Scully Avenue. Well, how'd you happen to be over here the other day? Well, I, I was riding my bike when I, when I saw this dog. Well, gee, he was... Uh, anyhow, when I, when I tried to catch him, he ran from me. I followed the silly muck clear over here. Uh, you ever catch him? No. Nah, I was about to when this man hollered and asked me if I wanted to see a free show. So I, I came in. I see. Well, dear, you must like dogs a lot, huh? Sure. You got one? Used to have one when my pop was with us, but we can't have no pets where we're living now. Oh, that's rough. Yeah. You know that poem? Which one? You know, about all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not, not even a mouse. Yeah? Well, that fits our place. Especially now. How do you mean? Well... I didn't think he'd miss it, you know, man with a house as big as this one and all. So when I saw this cute little fella up in that cage, well, I, I didn't really mean to take him on hold, but when he got under my sweater and was real quiet, and like he liked me, well, I, you know what I mean. Yeah, Bobby, I know. But I got to thinking... Decided to bring him back. So would you give me the old man to Mr. Gillis for me, please? No. I think you'd better do that yourself. Oh, no, no, please. He might be awful mad at me by now. No, Bobby. In fact, you're going to get a reward. Yeah? <laughs> Word of honor. Now, what do you say we go down where Mr. Gillis is putting on that Christmas show and see it? Okay? Oh, sure. Bobby. Yeah? Did you notice anything... Unusual about this mouse? Yeah, I sure did. What was it? He got some white on his right hind foot. Expense account item four, one dollar and sixty cents. Cab fare from the Gillis residence to the children's hospital for Mary and Bobby and myself. Inside, we followed the sound of children laughing and reached the auditorium. Marion found a seat among the nurses and I took Bobby backstage. When Jedia saw Gulliver, his face lit up like, well, like one of the trees he'd had delivered to the war. Oh, ah, Gulliver! By golly, by golly. I knew if anybody could do it, you could, Dollar. I didn't do a thing, Mr. Gillis. All the credit goes to Bobby. Oh, to Bobby Whale. I'll speak to you after the show, young man. Yes, sir. Bert, Bert, look, look, he's back. So glad to go, Oh, Gulliver, oh, I do declare I have never been so glad to see a person before. Yeah, you better hurry, Bert. He's scheduled to go on in just a minute. Oh, he will, he will. And I'll go check on the microphone when everything be just so. <laughs> don't go away, Dollar. No, he won't. Bobby, why don't you sit over there where you can see the stage? Yes, sir. Uh, Bert, you think Gulliver will sing today? You think? I know he will. 
Oh, 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 get ready, Gulliver. But that boy had Gulliver all day and all night, and he didn't sing once. Ah, did the boy ask him to? <sighs> Boys and girls, for the first time in the world, one of the wonders of the world, Gulliver the Singing Mouse. Hey, Mr. Dollar, can that mouse really sing? That is what we're going to find out, Bobby. Uh, exciting, isn't it, Dollar? Sure is, Mr. Gillis. All right, thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and now, for Gulliver's first number, he'd like to sing with... Uh, what's that, Gulliver? <laughs> oh, I, I see. Uh -huh. uh, he's going to sing Jingle Bells, but he wants me to get off stage so everybody will know it's really him doing it and not me. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Is he all right, Bert? Oh, fine, fine, just feeling his out. Well, why doesn't he start? He's going to listen. <laughs> well, Dollar. Now I have seen everything. Me too. Gee. Bert Glazer had a logical answer for having lied about his old vaudeville act. He knew I wouldn't believe the mice could really sing if I'd known he was a ventriloquist. And you know, well, after all, yet sometimes... Ah... Expense account total, including camp fare, Hartford Station, and my apartment, $38.20. As for my separate and additional fee, as agreed upon before I took this matter, well, there's a boy named Bobby Neves who lives on Scully Avenue over in Providence. See that he gets it, huh? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will tell you about next week's story in just a moment. Meantime... Hey, Dan, I'll make a deal with you. Oh? Let me have the mic for a second, then you can tell them about next week's story. By all means, be my guest. All right. I just don't want to pass up a chance to do two things. First, well, Pam and Eric and Fran, Mr. and Mrs. Froelich, Helen, Will, Scotty, oh, all the rest of you nice people who've written in to tell us how much you like the program. Thanks. I really appreciate hearing from you, and believe me, I'll answer your letters just as quickly as I can. Second, well, I'm sure you know what this is, and I want you to know it comes from the heart. Merry Christmas to you. God bless you. Now, next week. Next week, the case of a prize fighter who could win only by losing, because his life depended on it. Right. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. It is written by Charles B. Smith and produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Mary Jane Croft, Howard McNear, Parley Bear, G. Stanley Jones, Bill James, Lawrence Dobkin, and Richard Beals. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Dan Coverly speaking. Dan Coverly speaking.